August 18th, 2018. The first day of the first engineering class of my life, and I was outrageously nervous. I'd been talking to taking the class by my parents, and as I'm sure is consistent with most other people's assumptions, I thought that engineering was purely insanely complicated math and physics equations. So it was much to my surprise when, on the very first day, we didn't launch straight into an introduction to thermodynamics, but instead, we were met with a simple series of steps to help lead us to the perfect solution for any given problem. Everyone designs, who devises courses of action aimed at changing existing situations into preferred ones. The intellectual activity that designs material artifacts is no different fundamentally from the one that prescribes remedies for a sick patient or devises a new sales plan for a company. Engineering is not the scary subject that it's assumed to be, and through it, we can find fascinating solutions that we cannot see alone. In order to understand just how advantageous engineering and the design process can be, we need to consider three questions. First, what are these steps? Second, how can they help us in day-to-day -day life? And lastly, how can learning about engineering help us in other fields? First off, the steps that engineers use can be referred to as the engineering design process, and they are as follows. Define, brainstorm, select, prototype, test, iterate, and communicate. This sounds like a lot, but it means that you would first really specifically define your problem before brainstorming a lot of different solutions and settling on a favorite. Then you'd build a prototype before officially testing, and then you'd make edits or iterate before sharing your ideas in the communications. These steps are not linear, and they're highly iterative, meaning that at any point in the process where you see an opportunity or a necessity for improvements, you can circle back and make them. For example, take the idea of writing an English paper for class. The problem, defined, would be that you have to turn in a paper that doesn't yet exist. Brainstorming would be doing the necessary background research, and selecting the best idea would be settling on an answer to the prompt or a thesis. You could build a prototype by writing a rough draft, and test by showing it to teachers or peers who could give you feedback so that you could make edits or iterate before submitting it or publishing it in the communication state. Plus, these steps are purposefully broad, so they can be applied to anything. Speaking of, how can these steps help us in daily life? Well, that is entirely up to you. A recipe you're looking to perfect, an assignment you've got to do, even something that might seem trivial or silly, like planning out a prank to use against a friend. You don't have to be building a rocket or coding a robot to use this process. You just need to be willing to work towards a solution for a problem in your life. Don't be afraid to get creative with it either, as put by David Crismond in the science feature of Volume 80. Generating lots of ideas and selecting the best idea for further development is trademark design thinking strategy. Being creative and letting loose with your ideas isn't what comes to mind when you think of engineering, but it's the very essence of the subject. Whatever solution you're after, creativity is undeniably the driving factor. Without it, original ideas wouldn't exist. Many curriculums use PLTW, or Project Lead the Way ideas, in their schools, like our very school does in their engineering classes. And they would define brainstorm as, brainstorming as thinking without regards to feasibility. Basically, go with the flow, wherever your ideas take you. But how can learning about engineering help us in other fields, you might ask? Well, engineering and the design process teach a multitude of transferable skills, like communication, organization, leadership, teamwork, problem solving, and creativity. Let's talk about creativity again. A study covered by Teresa Amabil of MIT finds creativity to be linked to specific characteristics, like self-motivation, special cognitive abilities, risk orientation, expertise in the area, diverse experience, brilliance, and naivety, which here would, be, would mean being unrestrained by the typical way of doing things, instead of just generally being unknowledgeable. Plus, working with the design process is a surefire way to better your problem-solving skills. You might remember the quote from earlier about changing existing situations into preferred ones, which is exactly what problem-solving is. Maybe your boss needs help dealing with some difficult clients, or you've got a deadline coming up fast. Whatever the situation, problem-solving skills will be your friend. Just take it from Indeed, the largest career website in the world, who says the problem-solving skills are important in every single career at every single level. This means that working with the engineering design process could help to make you more employable later on in life, and just generally make you better rounded and more open to tackling problems. Plus, it's never too late to start improving your problem-solving skills. You don't necessarily have to be a kid to do it. Speaking of, 
I started this talk by discussing my very first engineering class and how nervous I was. It seems silly looking back on it now since I've been in engineering classes for four years and it's incredibly fun. Coming together with teammates to solve design issues makes me enjoy that class every single time I'm in it. This year we've gotten to do some crazy fun stuff like making miniature cars propelled by mouse traps or working with hydrogen fuel cells. Due to its built-in roadmap to success, its transferability, and the excellent skills you can learn through working with it, engineering and the design process is incredible. And through it, we form solutions that we cannot see alone. To start with a seemingly unsolvable issue and end with a perfect, shining solution is an incredible thing. Engineering and the design process impact almost every single field of life. Sure, it's responsible for the great and famous inventions like planes and trains and cars and printing press and the light bulb, but also things that you would never think of as inventions, like the food you have for breakfast this morning, or the clothes you're wearing, or the TV show you plan to go home and watch tonight. The theater I'm giving this in, the seats you're sitting in to watch it, but also the very talk itself. Design is everything, and everything is designed. Make an effort to utilize the engineering design process in your own life, and you're sure to find fascinating solutions that you could never have seen alone, and that you may have never thought possible. 